All right, so it's been about four months since I started using my current body LED hair regrowth helmet, headset. I'm not too sure what you call it. And four months ago, I took some photos of my hair. Then I began using this on a frequent basis. I think I was using it probably on average about five or six times a week. I was trying to do it every day, but there were just some days where that didn't happen. So of course, now the follow-up photos, I've taken some more photos and we're gonna see those photos pretty soon and I'm gonna share my commentary, but I also wanna share my experiences using this device. Now, I've just finished filming my everything you need to know about red light therapy and hair loss from a scientific point of view. That video will be up soon, if not already. There's already a blog article on this topic uh, over at lighttherapyinsiders.com. Links are all below. From that article, from the research we did uh, with that article in the video, it is clear that red light therapy is not only beneficial for slowing and controlling hair loss, but also for regrowing hair. The key takeaways from that research was that you need the right wavelength, typically about 650 to 660 nanometer red light, but also maybe a 620 to 630 nanometer light. And then also you need the right amount of power, but the power range was quite broad. If I remember correctly, the power figures that showed benefits range from three milliwatts over centimeter squared right up to 90 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So again, all of that is gonna be in my video and is in that blog article. Okay, so first things first, my experience using it. Well, it does come with Bluetooth headphones. Uh, I said it was a gimmick in that first video and yeah, I still think it's a gimmick. I never used it. There were times when I was listening to music while using this, but even with the little headsets on, you could still hear music in the room. Uh, I had conversations with this on, for instance. I suppose you could sync it up with your phone and it's a feature. I didn't use it, you may like it. It does look silly. Uh, I was conscious of using this if I knew there was gonna be someone walking past the window or we were gonna have a visitor. I mean, I do some kind of weird and crazy things, but this was just one product where I was like, I just, I just can't be bothered explaining it. But hey, if you're not worried about that sort of thing or you're using it in the privacy of your own home, it's not gonna be an issue. Battery life, I was getting six, seven uses between charges. Uh, there's no low battery warning or anything like that, which is a bit of a bummer. Pretty much some sessions I would just put it on and then a minute into the session it would turn off. I, the battery's dead, which was a bit frustrating. So I just got into the habit of charging it up every few sessions. It's got a USB-C charging port, so it's quite easy to charge. It is a little bit fragile. I did go away for a week and I was gonna take this with me to keep doing those treatments. But when I put it in the suitcase and packed it all up with clothing, I thought, you know what, this, this is just isn't gonna work. Plus it's quite bulky. So yeah, there was a week where I didn't use this in my four month treatment plan, uh, but I did take another red light therapy device that was emitting similar light and I was doing a few sessions with that. I was only maybe one or two. So anyway, um, I should also mention there are a few cracks here. I don't think this was me. Um, should note that my kids were playing with this once or twice because they thought it was pretty cool. I mean, hey, it was pretty cool for a kid. So there's a high chance that they may have caused that. But uh, again, no real biggie. Now I didn't feel any stimulating effects. I know some people when they use red light therapy, especially on the head, they get a bit of performance cognitive enhancement. I mean, you're getting more blood flow to the area and all of that. I didn't notice anything with this. It didn't affect my sleep. Often I use this right before bed, like literally as I was getting ready for bed, I'd put it on, brushing my teeth and stuff. Didn't have any issues with sleep, that is cool. However, I'm not surprised by that because the power output from this thing was really low. If you watch that other video, you, we saw that it was only measuring about three milliwatts over centimeter squared, which is super low um, to the point where I was like, I don't really even know if it's gonna work. Okay, so enough about my experiences. Remember, if you do want to buy one of these, they are quite expensive, 850 odd dollars. Current Body have given me a discount code. It is CB Alex, I believe. All the links are and notes are below. I think that saves you 15%. So if you do want to get one, yeah, I mean, use that discount code because it is going to save. Next though, we're going to look at these before and after photos. Now, real quick, I do need to mention when I took the before photos, I used my camera. I took a note as to how many days it had been since I had shaved my hair. So I knew the hair length uh, and I was going to do the same again with the follow-up. Unfortunately, what happened is the four months came up in terms of the end of my experiment 
and uh, we had a two week trip and I wasn't going to take this with me. Uh, and I realized, oh man, I, I was literally the day we were packing up. I was like, I don't want to extend the treatment and, and do it when I get back because all of a sudden a two week block without any treatment is, is I think it's a bit too long. Plus the four months had been up. Plus I was getting a bit sick of using it. Plus I wanted to try some other products. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take photos as is with my phone, even though it was a few days off the optimal length in terms of before and after comparisons. So the photos you're going to see on the after aren't quite as good as the before photos and my hair is a little bit shorter. So just keep that in mind. The other thing I should mention, I took it in a bathroom and the overhead light reflects on my head. So there are patches that look bald in some of the photos, uh, but it's not necessarily the case. It's just the light reflecting because if I look at some other photos, there's plenty of hair there. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here we go on the left, my before, on the right, my after. Now notice my hair length is a little bit longer in this one and excuse the background and yeah, and you can also see this, this light reflection here where you can't actually see much hair in there, but there is a bit of hair. So first up, what do you notice? Well, I mean, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? I mean, what do you notice? It's not the best angles in terms of comparison, but I mean, looking through here, there's, there's not much growth through uh, this part here, whereas it's not as noticeable on this side. I mean, maybe it's come back. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I want to say it has, but yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good, right? But uh, I don't know. Uh, down here, this is a weird sort of patch for me. I mean, I've always had a, a, a lack of growth in that bottom area, um, even when I was at high school, primary school. I don't necessarily think it's a hair loss pattern. I just think it's a Alex is a little bit odd pattern uh, because I remember at school, um, again, people make comments about that. Um, so let's focus more up here. Now, we'll try to zoom in. Again, next time I need to get my wife to take these photos so they're not blurry. I mean, what do you say? Like, it's just, I don't know. I, I wonder, I need to find out how they do it in the science. I mean, I mean, maybe if I let my hair grow out super long, it would be more apparent. The problem is I don't want to do that. It just looks horrible. And I'm filming on camera every week. So I like to keep it short. I can't really see any tangible differences saying that maybe, maybe there is, maybe up here, Maybe there is. I mean, there appears to be more in this one, doesn't there? Appears to be a little bit thicker. I mean, even this right side, you know, there's, there's, you can see the thinning through here, but it's not necessarily the case through here. So, hey, you know what? Maybe there has been a change. I don't know. What do you guys think? Last time I did a before and after, I got called out for saying there wasn't a change and everyone's like there was. So, yeah, you tell me. Anyway, that's one photo. Let's look at these other ones. All right, here we go, before and after. Now the camera angles aren't quite perfect. This is a little bit more of a top down. This is a little bit flatter here. And again, you see that uh, light reflection. What do we see? I mean, at the back, it looks a little bit thinner there, but that's because you can't see that on this photo because it's a little bit flatter. Uh, off to the side, I mean, it's hard. Okay, so we've got this stray here, there, which is probably that one. We have this stray here, there, which is probably that one this one here and this one here, but I don't see anything new. Sorry, I don't see anything new in the middle here. That one maybe, I don't know, around there, not too sure. Uh, you come through here, you've got this thicker patch here and there, which is which is the same, thinner through there. And maybe you could argue there's another a bit more here through here, I'm not too sure, but then it actually looks thinner back through here. But remember that's camera angle as well. So, I mean, hard to say, isn't it? What do you guys think? Let's see if there's any other photos. There we go. Here's another one, uh, similar to that first one. Again, you could argue that there is a bit more thickness coming through here. Remember this one on the right, the after, is is shorter hair length than this one. I think this is two weeks between haircuts, and this is about a week and a half. Uh, and it does actually look a little bit thicker, maybe around here, uh, and maybe even on this side as well. Not too much on the front. Uh, again, you see that bald patch because of the light. So just ignore that. So I don't want to come out and say one thing or another because I don't want it to be like, oh my God, it's amazing. Buy this product. And that's what people are going to think. Uh, but I also don't want to say that there's no results when, hey, there may actually be results. You know what? I want to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments below. And what I'm going to do for the next experiment, because I'm actually really looking forward to to doing these experiments because I'm, I'm hoping that, yeah, I get some 
I get some results. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wife to take some nice photos, maybe one week after I cut my hair so that it's, it's normal, nice and standard. I'm going to test it for maybe six months instead of four months. And uh, we're going to hope for the best. The next product I'm going to test is the Mito Red Light Laser Hair Helmet. Now, Mito Red Light have actually sent me both of their products, the LED version and the laser one. Uh, because these reviews and experiments take so long, I don't want to muck around with the cheaper one. I just want to go for the best, right? So I'm going to start that very, very soon uh, in the coming days. Really, you're going to have to subscribe and wait four to six months for that update. If I start seeing amazing results, then I'll, of course I'll do a video sooner. Check out our blog article over at lighttherapyinsiders.com. Bart did an excellent job with that article. I have a video on the same topic. Check out my first impressions video on the current body LED hair regrowth product and stay tuned for those other videos. But before you go, I need to talk about whether you should buy this, whether I recommend it. I mean, you come to your own conclusions. You've seen the photos. What do you think? Personally, I think it's underpowered. It's only coming out at three milliwatts over centimeter squared. Now, when we look at the science, the research showed that anything from say three milliwatts up to 90 milliwatts showed benefits. This is right down at the lower end of that range. I, I mean, it's, it's just scraping in, right? It was my concern going into it that it would be underpowered. If you look at say a panel, you're gonna be getting 60, 70, 80 milliwatts over centimeter squared at six inches. You don't even have to be right next to it. It's a lot more light. Now, I'm not saying more is better. I don't know. If you look at 3 to 90, let's just say you want to be in the middle at around 40 or 50. You're not going to get this from a headset. The other issue is the price. You're paying 800 bucks. I know you can get 15% off with that code, but let's say it's $700. It's a lot of money for something that's only usable on the head. At least with a panel, you could go out and get like a tabletop panel for five, 600 bucks, you know, like a Biomax 300 or a Mito Red Light, Mito Min, for instance, get a nice stand, and that's only going to be, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred dollars as well. But you can also use that in other areas of the body. You're getting much more power, you're getting more wavelengths. You're going to get, with those panels I just mentioned, you're going to get your 620, you're going to get your near infrared light. You're getting more, right? So it's, it's hard to suggest that you should go out and buy this. If you want to try something really different, you could check out the Iron Forge from a company called Chroman. Now this is a handheld device, which is super powerful. We're talking like 150 milliwatts over centimeter squared. And you can just use that on the head and it's only gonna take a few minutes to move it around. I know when I interviewed the inventor of this product, Michael, uh, he said he thinks his really thick hair is because of the use of this product. Uh, you can check out the interview. I'll put a link to that below. I don't know if you need that super high in intensity. I, I don't know. The research isn't clear on it. The research is messy with all things red light therapy. If you think of that Chroma device, it's putting out like 150 milliwatts, right? This is putting out three. I mean, it's it's a big difference. That Chroma device, for instance, is about $900. I think I've got an 8% discount code. So maybe you'll get it for 800, 900 bucks. I don't know. 700 for this. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be bashing the product, especially if it has led to growth in my hair, which is amazing. But I just feel like when you're looking at it from a red light therapy point of view, from a photonic light point of view, there are better options out there. One thing I'll mention is I know I do use a lot of panels, but I never use them on top of my head. Maybe that's why all of a sudden, you know, with the, I don't know what the section's called, maybe that's why we are seeing some benefit there because I've only used the lights front on or, or from behind. So, I don't know, who knows? Keen to hear your thoughts. I'll put links to everything below. Be sure to subscribe so you can see that next video where I'd use the Mito Red Light. And look, since you've watched this entire video, I want to thank you. And YouTube's going to come up with another recommendation that you might like. You're going to be able to click that right here.